Happy Friday, ladies and gentlemen. It is your main mizzle, Coach Fizzle in the dizzle. Well, actually, I'm in the kizzle. <laughs> and it's early, early morning. Yeah, listening to some classic hip-hop in on my commute. Just got to really give a big, great, wonderful shout-out real quick, first and foremost. Sue York, MJ's Lasagna, Tiff Beeman, and Stephanie Estevita. Yo, that was a great, great, great show last night. And for those who don't know what I'm talking about, you will see the show tomorrow afternoon. So just uh, check your Twitter, check your YouTube for the circulation of the episode. It was fire. And we definitely will have you guys back on uh, soon. You know what I mean? And that perspective was awesome. One of the things we got into last night, I'm going to touch on real quick this morning for my Nick fans, is this, okay, everybody saw me tweet on it yesterday. Everybody probably saw the video, uh, the, the, the article yesterday. Listen, I'm not here to step on or, or, or crush uh, David Fisdale's hopes, dreams, and aspirations to once again coach and all that. Mm. You know, you'll never hear me talk about a person you know, don't get a job. That's not who I am. But do me a favor, though, man. I mean, now, and, and again, it it it's not just necessarily what you said. It's also that author, uh, author and how he put it all together incorrectly. Uh, waxing some stuff that still hasn't actually been evidenced as if it was like gospel. You know, you, you, you should never put internet rumors in an actual story that's not fully vetted. You know, internet rumors that's not fully vetted. You shouldn't put that in a story. Even in a even in an opinion piece, it's kind of weird. You know what I mean? Because you're you're basing things off of things that aren't actual facts. But you know, I digress. Uh Fizz was here for two years. In that time. Not only did we not win, not only did we not feel a culture of winning, it was almost like losing was okay. It was all right to lose. You know, and like legit, the only people he like DMP'd was Frank, and that literally made no sense, but you know what? Yeah. And all that in his article, how, oh, I shouldn't have been a friend or a father to him. Dude, dude, that, that's a cop-out, bro. That's a cop-out. You know what I mean? You can have strong relationships with your players. But the relationship is, I am the head coach. You are the players. These are the plans. This is how we do things. You know what I mean? Accountability and, 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 and responsibility and maturity. You know, I got a son. I had a conversation with him the other day. He's 14. I had a conversation. You're, I, you have new expectations now. Your responsibility is growing and has grown, and you need to step up. He's 14. You got grown NBA players. You couldn't have told them that. You know, and still be their coach and still be their role model and still be there for them when their family passes. Like, dude. That's normal stuff. It's life. They're human beings. That's normal stuff. You got to come prepared for that. But you also got to be prepared for X's and O's. Because after all, that's what their job is. That is, again, and, and, and this guy wanted, not, not, not Fizz, but the author wanted to start arguing with, with, with Twitter fans who were calling him out on his records article. You know, talking about different rosters. The roster wasn't that different. It just honestly wasn't that different. And in the day, when he was let go, he had a record of 4-18. and 18. The interim coach that picked up got 17 wins out of the very same squad that he could only muster for. And 
Mike Miller didn't have the pedigree of LeBron and D Wade, you know. And so again, he got this job mainly because of the success of the Miami Heat, which I find interesting because the success of the Miami Heat was about the Miami Heat's players in this particular instance. It wasn't necessarily about they need superior coaching to to achieve a goal. So pretty much you had three superstars that you had to placate in order to win. And apparently David Fisdale was great at that. So my wonder is, what in the world made him think that placating the superstars equates to head coaching? And it's funny how they attach his coaching failures to the Knicks when we're the ones who gave him a second opportunity after his failure with the Grizzlies. Nobody even talks about take that for data anymore. You know, it's like, it's weird how because of New York, he is not a good coach when he really wasn't quality coaching with the Grizzlies. Yeah, so, again, David, I want you to have another job. Uh, I hope you do get another job because that's, yeah, get another job, man. Be, be in the lead. Nobody say you can't be in the lead. But own up to where your failures and shortcomings as a coach are. You know, I mean, dude, I self a master every day in my life. I don't, I don't make excuses for anything. You know, if I don't get it done right, then it's my bad. I got to fix it. Whatever it is, I got to do. That's how I live my life. You know, maybe you should kind of look at that a little bit more. Because based on that article, you weren't really standing up to where you went wrong. You, you, you relied on, you know, some other things that I read in there and I didn't really get that. But, uh, and then so we move on. Uh, what's his name? Rick Carlisle. I honestly think now that this has transpired ever so quickly, I am in full, full belief that Rick Carlisle had internal conversations with the Pacers organization before he made his decision to leave the Dallas Mavericks organization. Dude was, excuse me, dude was hired like that. Portland has had second interviews with three, at least three different coaches, and they're still debating as to who, who to bring in. You know what I mean? And all of this has happened way too fast, and quite honestly, it, it, it feels way too cozy, way too cozy, and it's like Mark Cuban is... is I don't know what's going on with Dallas and Mark Cuban, but it sounds like they're going to hire that Nike executive to be the GM. And they already locked in, supposedly, on Jason Kidd, who uh, Carlisle been screaming to bring in since he left, which tells me that they have had internal conversations. He probably called Jay and was like, listen, man, you know, I'm I'm leaving. I'm going to Indiana, but I'm gonna tell him to bring you in. So get yourself together. Get yourself ready. You know, don't take no other jobs. And I think that's what keyed back into that Portland thing because, you know, where Dame said J Kid's name, that was pretty much a, a stamp of approval. And he came out immediately and was like, yeah, I'm not doing that. But then you hear he had an interview in Orlando. But I think that was just for face value, to be honest. Because you didn't hear much of anything after that until all of this. And all of the filibuster has been about Dallas and him. And it's interesting how he wasn't on the radar until... Rip, uh, until Carlisle said his name, and now all of a sudden he's the he's the the standout. Don't you just love how all this stuff works? You know, there's there's definitely some buddy system going on inside the inner workings there. 
Let's see, Boston hired Ime Udoka, and other than him and Neil Long apparently being together and him being like this this really great African dude, uh, I hear I hear nothing, nothing, nothing but good things. Nothing, not I've heard no negative things about him in his spin cycle. So again, Brad Stevens made a quick hire in my opinion. Uh but a good hire. And apparently the, the players are, are, are down with it. So that's cool. But now Brad Stevens needs to focus on being a GM and not a coach and put together a, 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 a better roster. You know, that I don't know if that Kemba move was all that great. And Al Horford is still I, I don't I don't I don't I don't really understand that one. Yeah, just to be honest, I don't really understand that one. But I feel like that was a coach's move and not a GM's move. So he got to get his GM hat on and take care of that team and not just be in his vision of what he wanted to coach. Let's see. But speaking of Orlando, they are still looking for a coach. Washington is still looking for a coach. Portland is still looking for a coach. Ah. I'm hearing more Chauncey Billups or Dan Tony to uh, Portland, though. Either one of those will be interesting. But Indiana with Rick Carlisle and that roster and with Miles Turner coming back and with T.J. Warren being healthy coming back, dude, that's another playoff team. You know, uh, dude, the, the East is getting, the East is getting thick. That's just the easiest and most common, most real way to say it. The East is getting thick. You know, so this off season for a lot of teams is going to be vital to their upward mobility because teams are coming. Some play, some 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 GMs are seeing what quality coaching does, and they're trying to find and hire the quality coaches for their quality uh, staff, like Indiana. So, yeah, that's going to be that's gonna be very interesting coming next year, man. And back to this real quick, this, this Milwaukee Bucks thing. Yo, even if they lose, how in the world do you fire Budenholzer? I don't see it. who else out there is as good or better right now. Because I don't see it. Uh, One more coaching thing. I'm hearing... Well, I saw Dolan J and a few others uh, start talking Becky Hammond to replace Mike Woodson. I'm, I'm with that. I do know that we have to replace the offensive-minded coaching. Because I know that was Mike Woodson. And that was one of the things toward the end of the season that I started noticing where we were struggling at. We were struggling with scoring. We were struggling with our offense because our offensive-minded guy became the head coach of Indiana University. So we definitely need to replace that. And I think if we can do that with with Becky or someone else that is commiserate, I think we'll be in good shape. And one just final note before I uh, hop off and just get into my rest of my day on Friday. There is a vibe going on inside Nicklandia. It's not a huge vibe, but there is a vibe that we're going to take a step backward next year. I will say this. Number one, I disagree with that entirely. I don't think there's a step backward to take. Well, do I think that Randall will shoot 42% from three next year? Probably not. Probably not. But to me, him shooting less of a percentage of threes is not necessarily a step backward. If the overall, because again, guys, 
basketball is a team sport. So I don't really, I mean, I do care about the development and growth of each individual player, but for the common cause of the team. So as long as everybody who's going to be on this roster come next season gets better at what they did this year, we won't take a step back. And that's to include the coaching staff. That's everybody. That's Leon Rose. That's Brock uh, Aller. That's everybody. That's Wes. That's everybody. We all have to get better on what we did this season next year. And if that happens, we won't take a step back at all. At all. I mean... I'm not going to get into all the Knicks uh, roster and stuff like that. I was about to, and then I realized, you know what, nah, because then I'll be here all day. But have faith in this team, guys. Keep the faith that they earn. They earn your faith. Don't go back in the past again. Y'all started doing that again. Don't do that, okay? Because this is not those rosters. This is not those regimes. We cannot continue to live in the past if we want to revel in our future. We can't keep going back to how our ex-girlfriends, boyfriends hurt us. And that's why we look at you guys funny. Because anytime you do that in a real relationship, you hold the, this, this person in your life to what happened last time. And this relationship is going to fall apart. It just is. So, no mas, no more exes, all right? No more, no more abuse. We are in a good place. We are okay. No one is hurting us, okay? So, Randall is our guy. Embrace that. I'm sorry, embrace that. He's our guy. He proved that he deserved our fervor that we gave him. He, he deserved that love that we gave him. And if y'all don't think he's back working, y'all, come on, come on, come on. Stop going with old storylines. Stop going with that old stuff, man. It is a brand new day one day, and we got to get used to that brand new day. You know, we weren't in a lottery. We weren't in lottery conversation. There's no giant rumors of super team and trade everybody. There's none of that, man. We don't need it. We don't want it. We got a good quality team. And stop saying, oh, well, we got the four C, but look what happened in the playoffs. Stop. Damn. Yes, we lost. That's what happened. At the end of the day, we didn't lose any more points for Randall not scoring as best as he could or the rest. But guess what, guys? Y'all keep saying Randall. Yes, Randall had a poor performance, but Randall was the only one doubled and triple teamed the entire series. What happened to the rest of our offense that could have freed him up? What happened to that? So let's just stop with the old Randall. The team got there together and the team failed together. But this is the first time that this team did that since they've been together for two, three years. And there's literally no reason why they would not get there again next year. And look at us. We went from being, oh, I just want them to make the play-in. Oh, maybe they'll make the play-in or the A seed and we still get the lottery. We made the fourth seed and y'all still mad. Somebody said fluke. Whether they said, I don't think it's a fluke or it is a fluke, that word should not have been anywhere near what we did this season because it wasn't a fluke oh and by the way we cannot trade Mitch if we're going to lose Nerlens Noel in the offseason y'all gotta make sense with these trade ideas that you have because at the end of the day that center that front court defense is part of what got us here that's part of our identity so if we lose that, we lose that part of our identity, and then we become a weaker team than we were last year. 
Can we stop worrying about sexy names for one off season, please? I mean, golly, y'all act like we are like this, this, this. Devoid team, like we don't have nobody on our team. And everybody else's trash is so much better than anything else we've got. We have to cut that crap out because Lord knows, I'm, dude, I'm tired of seeing it. I really am. And I'm tired of arguing with people online about the way that they toss aside these players that we have. I mean, God, dog, they fighting claw for us just for y'all to wax poetic about De'Aaron Fox or somebody. I mean, yo, y'all was having arguments about Ben Simmons. I mean, any name that come out, just sprinkle it and Nick fans go nuts. And you, come on, come on. Oh, I, anyway, now I'm just ranting, and I know I am. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, one love, I will holler at y'all. Oh, man, this is a 20-minute video. Wow, that's crazy. All right, well, enjoy it if you can. If you, if you can hang out and watch the whole thing, I appreciate it. If not, uh, just comment on the first part and then come out in the video, I guess. <laughs> Yo, I will have at you later. Have a great Friday. One love to Nick Landio. One love to the NBA. One love to all sports fans everywhere. Peace.